In high school, you have learned how to compute the derivative of a function of a single variable. At university, we will generalize this idea later on to functions of more variables. We will also use notations that might not be familiar to you. In this video, we will both review some basic concepts of the derivative and we will pay special attention to the different notations that are used. So, what is the derivative again of a function df dx? So, what do we have? f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h and then taking limit h to 0. That is by definition the derivative of a function. Now, a notation that is used very often at high school is f prime of x to denote the derivative. And at university, in order to be able to generalize this, we often use the notation df dx. So throughout the videos we will use both of them. Now let's see what happens if we compute the derivative of say x squared to see what happens if we use the definition. In order to do so we need f at x plus h and f at x. Well f at x is just x squared and f at x plus h equals x plus h squared. And working out the brackets we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Now we put all of that into our definition over there. We get f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And then you see that the x squareds cancel out. Uh, and the 2xh over h gives us a 2x. The h squared over h gives us a h. And if we take h to 0, we get 2x. So in that case, the df dx equals 2x or f prime equals 2x. Now, using uh, the definition to compute all the derivatives is very cumbersome. Fortunately, we have a number of rules that we can use. We have linearity, we have the product rule, we have the chain rule. So, what are they again? What does this mean? Linearity means that the ddx, the derivative of a linear combination of f and g, so the ddx of f plus c times g. So this means ddx differentiate f plus c times g equals the derivative of x plus c times the derivative of g. So we can easily compute derivatives of linear combinations of functions. And we have the product rule that says if you have the product of two functions f times g and we want to compute its derivatives, so the ddx of f times g, so what do we need to do? Differentiate f times g plus leave f and differentiate g. You may know this product rule from high school. And then we have the chain rule, which is slightly more tricky, which we can use for the composition of functions if you have the f of u of x. So an example of such a composition is f of x equals square root of x squared plus 1. So in that case, we have a composition of u equals x squared plus 1. And then we take the derivative of that, the square root of u. So then we have a composition of two functions. First you do x squared plus 1, and then you take the square root of what you have. So how can you compute the derivative of that? Fortunately for that we have the chain rule. So the ddx of the composition f of u of x. So f depends on u and u depends on x. So what do you do? Differentiate by f with respect to u times du dx. And that gives you the chain rule. Proving this is, by the way, not that straightforward. We will do so in a later video. Where, uh, pro proving the product rule is a bit easier. We will also do that in a later video. We'll focus now on the proof of the uh, linearity, just for fun. So the derivative of f plus c times g. So what do you do? We have f plus c times g in x plus h over here, minus f plus c times g in x. Take the, di uh, the, the difference. <coughs> uh, we reorder the terms a bit, put both f's here and both g's over there. And then if both limits exist, so here we use the limit rules, if both limits exist, then the sum of a limit is the limit of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the sum of the limits equals the limits of the sum, so we can separate them. And Constant times the limit equals the uh, can this constant can be taken out over here. 
So what we get is here fx plus h minus f over h and the second limit g of x plus h minus g over h, which is exactly f prime plus c times g prime. And that proves here the rule about the linearity.